Hello and welcome everyone to Coach's Corner, our weekly coaches show. We sit down with Greg Catuso, the head football coach, right here at the University of Albany. A wrap-up edition, if you will, Coach. You finish a season seven and five. And it, it's hard to mention this season without mentioning last year's record of one and 11. You came in here and took the program over. At the very start of this thing, Coach, did you see a seven-win football team? Or where did you prognosticate in your own mind's eye where you'd be? It's really hard when you don't know the kids, you don't know the lay of the land. I, I you know, I thought we could win some games. You know, I, I think, you know, as we, when we got into camp and we had some deficiencies that, that I think we made some good moves. I think moving Mike Nicastro uh, into the linebacker position helped solidify that, you know, moving some people around made us a little better. But we, you know, we, we honestly, I mean, we thought if we could win three or four games it would be a, a, a pretty solid year. You know, then we won three or four games, and we thought we could win five or six. And you know, we now we're disappointed we only win eight or nine. So that's right. a expectation. Sometimes are tough, but um, you know, I, I just think it's a real tribute to our seniors. I think they they really bought in. We had no, we didn't have one issue with a senior this year, and and not one. You know, there was a little tugging and pulling here and there with a couple guys, but really nothing bad. And and because of that, I think the chemistry in the team was very good. Have you allowed yourself to just t take a second and look and say, wow, you know, University of Albany had one of the biggest turnarounds in college football this year, a six-game swing? Yeah, I, I, it's been brought up to me. It's not something, I, I don't know the answer to that question, but I, I, who had the biggest turnaround, but I think six games pretty significant, no matter how you look at it. And, um, you know, we, we, we're happy. We're, we're happy that for a couple things. One, the seniors could go out on senior day with a win, which was big. I think our, I don't know who was more excited, our seniors or our alumni on the sidelines we had at the game. You know, those guys were going crazy. and uh, It was great. It was a great atmosphere down with us on the field. So that was big. And, I, you know, I mean, we wanted to be over 500. You know, I mean, seven and five, was, it might only be a one game difference. But, um, you know, we, we being over 500 was a good thing. And, and I think it gives us a chance to certainly help us in recruiting as we go forward. Well, at the start of the year, Coach, it looked like your offense uh, was struggling to gain traction. And then throughout the year, it seemed like every week, another step forward, another step forward. And it, it's tough to talk about that offense without the seniors, guys like uh, Omar Osborne and Cole King and Will Fiaki. Where do you think that, that, that offense ended up uh, you know, from where they started when you first took over? I, I think what you saw was a progression of where we knew we had to start out at offensively. We knew we had to run the ball more to get – some experience in the receiving core picked up, you know, may, namely Josh gets better. And, we, you know, people forget Jake Meek was hurt early. Um, Brad Harris was, no one knew about Brad Harris. So we were young. We had Cole King and Omar and Brian was basically who we were operating and Will. So we knew um, we knew we had to run the ball and rely on, on those guys early. But as the offense started to go and those young guys started to pick it up, we became a lot more um, balanced. And I think that you saw that towards the end of the year, you know, People always said, why is Omar not running as much? Well, some of it was just a game situation, but a lot of it was, you know, they were, you know, the Stony Brook game was a, a great look at how an offense should work. They, they loaded the box to stop Omar. We were able to throw the ball in the first half effectively. Um, they got nervous, started to get their safeties out of the box because of the passing game, and then we could run Omar. And that's really what our offense is. It's a reaction to what the defense does, and, and we did a good job. Um, I think the last, you know, three f weeks of attacking de uh, good defenses, you know, I mean, we attacked, you know, we beat up Delaware offensively, I think, and, and we had a good game at Villanova offensively, and we had a great game against Stony Brook. So that's kind of the, I'm not surprised the offense struggled early. Well, a, a part of the reason that uh, maybe you were more balanced is Josh Gontero coming in. And I remember talking to you preseason saying, hey, who's a guy that we don't know, that we're going to know by season's end? You were very quick to say, you know, there's this kid from Ligonor High School, uh, turns out he's named Rookie of the Year, Offensive Rookie of the Year by the CAA. A huge honor, first for uh, U Albany here. Uh, just talk about what he brought to the table as a true freshman. You know, I, I've known Josh for so long. He's, he's like kind of like my adopted son. You know, I, I just, I've known him for four years, you know, recruiting the high school and seeing him around, having him down at Maryland for, you know, recruiting functions and games and things like that. I just, I really liked him. And, and we, you know, we needed him to get his SATs up. He worked hard and he did that. We were able to, to take him into the program. And I had never had a doubt in my mind that he was going to be a really good player for us. And, and I know our off, I knew this offense. I knew once we got to this point where we could, if we had a slot receiver, it, it, it's what makes the offense really go. And um, he just, I mean, 58 catches and nine touchdowns for a true freshman is, is outrageous numbers. And uh, in this league, I mean, that's pretty darn good. He's a great football player. 
Uh, on the other side of the ball, defensively, uh, it wasn't just your offense taking steps forward. It looked like there was a maturation process on this side of the ball. You have some young guys too on, on that side coming back. Talk about you know how excited you are to have a guy like you know Michael Nicastro back, Marcel Nagachi back. Yeah, we our defense is young. I mean, we we lose Colo, who played good all year for us, and one of those seniors that that did a good job. And and uh, you know, Dorse was great all year. Dorsey. The poor kid probably played way too many reps because he just was beat up by the end of the year. Those guys were great. TJ Adawu did a great job for us this year. I thought TJ played great in the Stony Brook game, but but after that, it's all young guys. And you, when you look at the defense, it's you know you mentioned two, um, but you know uh, Jamal Robinson is a true freshman playing corner, playing the X receiver every every play, the best player on the other team. He did a really good job, and we're excited about him. Uh, Chris Johnson, I think, is going to be uh, has the potential to be an all-conference safety here in a couple in a year or two, and um, you know, and we've got some young guys. You know, Jack played really well. Forrester played really well on the D line until he got hurt. Um, Malachi, I thought Malachi Hoskins, as the year went on, just got better, better, better by leaps and bounds. I mean, he ended up he ended up with five sacks, I think, which is a, which is a huge number for a freshman. You know, a 210 pound kid. So we're excited. We we have good players. I think Neil Morrison. I mean. You know, that last game, Neil Morrison, who's a sophomore, um, is a kid who changed that whole game at Stony Brook. When we were hurting an outside linebacker, he made it back for the last game, and uh, he was a big reason we could stop their running game. So, you know, we've got a bunch of young kids that we're excited about. Um, they all can run, and they're tough, and they're dedicated, and we've got a lot to build with there. You certainly do. Uh, and You and I talk every week here. And Time and again here, especially the latter half of the season as you went through the schedule, you talk about as a quarterback's league. And the upper echelon teams had that solidified guy. You're going to lose Will Fiaki, who's one of the better quarterbacks in the league. Where do you go at that position from here? It's the biggest concern we have going forward. You know, I mean, we've got, got a couple guys in the program right now, uh, Shane Sweeney and, and Danny Hardings. And, um, you know, we've got a couple other guys that, that are, you know, Ryan, I'm not sure if Ryan wants to come back. and. There's Steve Shanley. I mean, we've got four guys right now. We're going to bring some guys in. Uh, it's going to be very competitive in the spring. Um, it's a critical part of our team, and it's not just our conference. It's quarterback. It's everywhere. You know, you, everywhere in football, it's quarterback dominated, and um, we've got to find the right guy to run this offense. And it'll be interesting. It's going to be a challenge, and you know, we've got plans already what we're going to do in the spring to challenge our quarterbacks and. Um, to see who can handle it because um, in our offense they don't look to the sideline they they run everything out there and that's what will by the midpoint of the year really had a good control of the offense and uh, these guys got a lot of learning to do to see if they can run the take the keys to the Jaguar so right. we'll see right. all right coach before we let you get out of here you know where do you go from here not, you know not asking you to give me an overall record for next season but you know you got a core group of guys coming back uh, have you set any goals for yourself and, and your team our goals never change. I mean, we want to win the conference, and, and uh, that's what we're going to work towards. I mean, there's no secret. Um, you know, I think anybody, whoever wins this conference has an opportunity to play for a national championship, uh, and that's what we want to try to do. It's going to be tough next year. I think the schedule, when it comes out, is going to be um, rather difficult, but that's okay. It's a big challenge, and um, I think that the worries about being in the CAA have been, you know, have gone away a little bit. We, we've shown we can compete. You know, other than probably the two top teams in the conference, we've, you know, we competed or beat most of the top teams. And uh, so we're confident going forward that, that um, we can compete in this league. And uh, I, I still think that it's a three to five year plan. I've told everybody that it's, it, regardless of what our record is this year and next year, really in year three, when you got three years of, you know, your CAA level recruits and is when we should be making our move. So um, hopefully we can do it sooner, but we'll see. All right, Coach, well, congratulations on the 7-5 and five record, six-game turnaround, and a tremendous first year here. Thank you. And best of luck moving forward. Thank you very much. All right, that'll do it for our final edition of Coach's Corner for this season. Of course, you can check us out next season and uh, as we take on year three of the CAA schedule. For Coach Catuso, I'm Zach Bai. We'll see you next time.